Reserving the right Reserve to object. Justice. I'm tempted to respond to that. Mr. President, reserving the right to object. The Senator from Louisiana. If I could simply inquire of the Majority Leader through the Chair, I would be happy to offer consent if I had assurance that my amendment that I've been trying to call up, that I've been trying to get a vote on all week, which heretofore has been blocked, if I can have absolute assurance that that will be on the list of amendments offered and voted on. Mr. President, I think that he should direct that to his um, assistant leader, Senator Kyle. Is his going to be on the list? The Senator from Arizona. Mr. President, it seems to me that if the Senator from Louisiana has indicated that he will object to the unanimous consent request unless his amendment number 621, I gather, is on the list, that that's a question then for the leader to address. I uh, want to indicate that we have a number of members who have amendments that they want to offer, and we're going to work hard to make sure that all of our members who want to offer amendments can do so. At the same time, we're going to do our best to ensure that that is not an unreasonable uh, list of amendments. And uh, obviously, members who insist on having an amendment as a condition to the unanimous consent request can make that point clear. Uh, Mr. President, uh, but I think it's clear from my friend, the conversations, plural, that we've had, that the, the list that we're talking about is a list of 10 or 12 amendments. Is that right? Mr. President. The, the Senator from Arizona. I would say to the leader that I think that's correct. That's going to require a lot of effort on this side to reduce the number of amendments that are pending, as, as the, the, the leader is well aware. You're going to have to work hard. Think how hard I'm going to work to defeat those amendments. So I've got more yeah. work, work than you have. Mr. Mr. President, I, uh, in, in response to my friend, uh, the, the, the leader, he's worked very hard and he's been very successful. Uh, but I, I do, in all seriousness, want to note that in order to try to limit the number of amendments, because there's a list of 36 here, it's going to require a lot of work on our side. And uh, we're going to, in, faith do the, in good faith, do the best that we can. Uh, but I, I just want to reiterate, as far as I'm concerned, the senator from Louisiana will have to be on the list because otherwise he would object to the vitiation of the, uh, of the cloture vote. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, his, his amendment is on the list. But at some point, the majority is going to have to agree to the list that we, uh, th that we offer. Mr. President, but I, I, I think it's fair that we have a finite list. This, we, we're now we're up to 35 amendments. Mr. President, as, as I told the leader, we had a list of 36 amendments filed. I told the majority leader that I thought we could get that list down to 10 or 12, and that's still my intention. Mr. President, what I think would be fair then, I know that uh, the senator from Arizona is going to act in good faith to cut the number down as, uh, to a small a number as he can in good faith. Uh, but, you know, we can still come back with another cloture vote if there's a lot of unnecessary amendments in that number of, um, if you can't get people to work reasonably with you. Um, so I would ask consent, I've asked consent to vitiate the vote, closure vote, and that a subsequent closure vote occur. Ms. Ms. President, reserving the right to object. Senator from Louisiana. I, I didn't mean to cut off the majority leader if they'd like to finish. I'd just like to reiterate, having spent the week trying to get this one amendment up, my top priority amendment to be recognized and to get a vote on that, having heard speeches on the floor that the floor was open to amendments, and yet having been blocked consistently in my attempts to get this amendment up, uh, I have not yet heard any guarantee that that will happen. And so given that, I regretfully will object to the unanimous consent request. Well, we're familiar with his amendment. Basically, as I understand the amendment is that members would never get a COLA again, and so we're willing to debate that. That's basically what it is, is that right? Uh, that, is not, that is not correct. If I could uh, advise the Chair, the amendment would be to require votes for any future pay raises or COLAs, require member votes not to have that be on autopilot to happen automatically, particularly given the state of the economy and the and the uh, income losses and the job losses that are being suffered around the country. President, the majority let's, I, let's, I note the absence of point. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Kaka.